go. Um, welcome everybody. Um, don't don't be distracted if there are people joining us. We said we'll just start at eleven ten, and we should be good for work. Some of you have just uh, come back from your holidays. I trust you had a good time. Uh, people like Silas, uh, good to see you. Uh, Gan also, welcome back from Japan. Hope you had a good time and didn't meet too many Singaporeans. Um, we have this tradition and those who are new to us, uh, we always want to have a year to, to sort of uh, close the year. Uh, we start uh, uh, by coming to God and then just at a stroke of midnight, um, just play a blessing for all of us and then uh, a good time to really also do the Lord's Communion. Uh, with the family. I trust you have your own elements with you. And then we'll take it from here. Um, just hang on for a while. Can I just take away all these things? All these words all the way. Yeah. And just adjust some things. Okay. Okay, if your Bible's open today, or one of those special things, uh, do you want to ask me any slides? I said no slides, so just show me a picture. Uh, it's a picture from Michael, um, Michael and Jello, we went to Rome. I wanted to show a picture. It's called the uh, the creation of Adam. We we'll just show that picture. But today, no, no, no screen sharing, no nothing. Malcolm can show the picture later. We want to just uh, focus on God's word first. Thank you, Malcolm. We'll show the picture later. I have to ask you to just keep your Bibles open. If you can have your Bibles open, please go to John chapter nine. If you can go to John chapter nine, and I want to take us through, and this will be. I think from there, I told people like Silas and Gunn, this will be the anchoring verse, uh, or at least the part of the verse that may anchor us for 2024. So I want to go through the book of John chapter 9. It talks about how Jesus healed a, more, a man born blind. If you look at John chapter 9 verse 1, as he went along, Jesus saw a man blind from birth. He despised asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents? He was born blind. Jesus said, neither this man nor his parents sin, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. Sometimes when we, 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 we uh, maybe in 2023 or maybe in 2024, if God allows something to happen to us, be well, business, or relationship or some health issues, if something happens to us, it may not necessarily mean that we did something wrong or, or if one of our children gets sick, that our children have sinned. No, but the word of God says here, neither the man nor his parents had sinned, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. But what's important for us, especially for us in the marketplace, the Lord says, as long as this day, verse 4, we must do the works of him who sent me. So regardless of circumstances, wherever we are, whatever we do, whatever situation we're in, as long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Whether we are in a difficult position or, or some things have happened to us, sometimes things happen to us. I mean, this man was born blind. He didn't do anything wrong. You think about it, sometimes some, some people will say this shit happens, right? But so that as long as it's day, we must still nonetheless do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming one time, one day when no one can work. And God says, Jesus says, while I'm in the world, I'm the light of this world. And it's interesting, after he said that, uh, without the man asking, and this is interesting, right? most of the time people will come to Jesus, Jesus, can you heal me? Just heal you. This one, without Jesus, without this man approaching him, Without the blind man approaching Jesus, it was Jesus who went to him and says to him, after saying this, all these things he said in verses 3 to 5, it was Jesus who went to this man. I don't see the Bible telling me that this man went to Jesus and said, Jesus, son of God, can you heal me? Nothing of that sort. In fact, as you read further in John 9, he didn't know that he was the son of God until Jesus told him. So after saying all those things in verses 3 and 5, Jesus himself went to the man who didn't ask to be healed after this, Jesus spat on the ground, made some mud and saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. And then he says, go wash in the pool of Siloam. And the word of God says, this word Siloam means sent. I want to tell you something here. When we talk about both the spit, the saliva, that's divinity for you. It's God, it's divine. It's Jesus himself, the saliva. All right. And then the mud talks about humanity. Mud, mud is, is from earth. Is is God Himself saliva, the man of God, is divinity working together with humanity to give us a miracle. So a miracle took place, and a man got his eyesight restored. Without even asking for it, his eyesight was restored. And after his sight was restored, verse 8 says, Neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging. This man was a blind man, he was a beggar. He says, the neighbors and those who had seen him says, Isn't this the man who used to sit and beg? Someone claimed, some claimed that he was. 
Others said, no, he only looks like him. But he himself, listen to this. He himself, verse 9, John 9, verse 9 says, he himself, the blind man says, I am the man. I want you to know when he says, I'm the man in Greek, I think it's, uh, it, it's pronounced, I go me, I go me. It is the same word that Jesus said when he came to a point where he says, I am. It's interesting that it is a, a miracle whereby Jesus heals a man born blind. This man then says, I am. The very words that Jesus himself used when he says, I am, I am who I am. I am. And then this guy says, I am the one. This guy, the blind man who was, who was uh, 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 blind from birth, God touched him, healed him. He says, I am. And in 2024, I hope Wing, I hope Owen, I hope all of us, you know, until someone actually knows about God, we are a representative of God to that person. I want to encourage us. Anything you do, whether you're checking email, sending email, talking to someone, talking to the janitor, talking to the prime minister, talking to all kinds of people, every word, every action, every dollar spent, we are a representative of God. The words we use can even be the words that God himself used. Here he says, I am the man. How then were your eyes open? The man called Jesus, made some mud, put on my eyes, told me to go wash. I wash and then I could see. So the neighbors all got very excited about that. And then, and then this is interesting, it was the Pharisees who then came to investigate. So the neighbors then in verse 11 brought the Pharisees to the, to the man. He brought this man who had been blind from birth. They brought him to the Pharisees. Now the Pharisees started to investigate. The Pharisees were not very happy. You know why? Because on the day it was done, it was Sabbath. So they were already not very happy. Verse 16 says, some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God for he does not keep the Sabbath. They're missing the point completely. And in 2024, as we go into 2024, I want to just highlight a distinction here between the ethics of Jesus and the ethics of a Pharisee. I want to, I want to encourage us. What's the difference between uh, um, Jesus and, and the Pharisees? And I want to just immediately go to uh, and point out something to you. And that is something that you see in Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 6, 53 to 7, verse 4. But I will just read it for you. You keep your eyes on John chapter 9. I will read Mark chapter 6, 50, 53 to you. When they crossed over, they landed at the Gennesaret and anchored there. As soon as they got out, people recognized Jesus. They all carried the sick and mess to whoever, wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, Jesus, into the towns, the villages or marketplace, they placed the sick in the marketplace. Keyword. They placed the sick. You can imagine it's chaotic. Huh? They placed all the sick people before Jesus in the marketplace. They begged Jesus to let them touch even the edge of his cloak and those who touched him were healed in as much as this blind man was healed because Jesus chose to heal them. What does that do in terms of your ethics? Jesus was always involved. He would go anywhere, even when he was tired and we, he actually needed some peace. Whenever he was, he was needed, he would go. And whenever he went, they placed the sick in the marketplace. He healed them. He touched them. Paraphrase and contrast the distinction between the Pharisees. Whereas on the Pharisees, in the other hand, in Mark chapter 6, 53, all the way to Mark chapter 7, verse 4, the Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem, they came around Jesus and saw some of his disciples eating food with hands that were unclean, unwashed. The Pharisees and all the Jews, you must know, do not eat until their hands are given a ceremonial washing, holding it to the tradition of the elders. When they, where they come, listen to this, where they come from the marketplace, they do not eat until they, unless they wash and they observe many other traditions such as the washing of cups and so forth. Difference between Jesus and the Pharisees. Jesus uses the marketplace to touch people. What, do the, what does the Pharisee do? The Pharisee wash hand, followed by tradition. You can avoid dirty things. They don't touch. When they come from the marketplace, verse uh, Mark chapter 7 says, they do not eat until they wash. And I hope that in 2024, we will be uh, Christians, we will be people who will go out there and make a difference. And, and really, when we see someone that needs to be touched by God, someone who needs to be spoken to, we will be the ones, the very hands and legs representing Jesus to say, I am. Not that you are God, but I am a son of God. When you are, you have the authority. I am, I can do what the Lord wants me to do. Bring healing, bring reformation, bring restoration to the people. Unlike the Pharisees who will avoid, 
unlike the Pharisees. And this, going back to John chapter 9, not only do they avoid, and they're just a stickler for tradition, when they see the acts and the miracle of Jesus, they still don't recognize it is Jesus. Now go back to John chapter 9. So see what they say here. After that, they say, this man, John chapter 9, verse 16, this man cannot be from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. Verse 18, the Pharisees still did not believe he'd be blind and had received his sight. They sent for the man's parents. And the man's parents says, we know he's our son. We know he was one blind, but he can see now. And, and verse 21 says, but he can see now. Or who opened his eyes, we don't know. Ask him. He's of age. He will speak for himself. Now listen to this. Chapter 9, verse 22. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders who had already decided that anyone who acknowledged that Jesus was the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. The Pharisees already decided that they were going to take action against anyone who acknowledged that Jesus was the Messiah. I've got a question for you, and later the answer will be there. Who is the one that's blind here? There's physical blindness and the spiritual blindness. The man who was physically blind was going to see. And later we'll come to the anchor verse. But the Pharisees decided well from day one, a stickler for tradition, this ethics of wanting to avoid the marketplace, oh, dirty, dirty, don't touch. They were the ones who had seen or know of the miracle. They don't go in, 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 in when they investigate, they investigate with this preconception notion that they were going to denounce that anyone who acknowledged that Jesus was the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. They were going to ostracize these people. These are the Pharisees. So a second time, they asked the man who had been blind, now give glory to God, almost like a threat. Huh? Sharon, Owen, give glory to God. Tell me the truth, they say. We know this man, Jesus, is a sinner. And this is our anchor verse. The blind man said, he replied, whether he's a sinner or not, I don't know. But I know this, one thing I do know. I was blind. But now, I see. In 2024, I uh, hope it's not too cringy. Uh, the, the team verse is called Be Nice. B-N-I-S. But now I see. I hope that in 2024, and as we go through a whole series of going through certain things, our eyes begin to light up. We begin to know that this is what it is. But now I see. One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. The Pharisees, verse 28, heard the sounds of him. You are this fellow's disciples. We are disciples of Moses completely missing the feature. The son of man was of them. They chose to say they are the disciples of Moses, whereas they don't recognize Jesus to be son of God. And what did they do? In verse 34, after they scolded the man once again, you were steeped in sin at birth. How dare you lecture us? And they threw him out. Jesus heard that they threw him out and then he found the blind man. He says, do you believe in the son of man? Verse 36, who is this man? The blind man said, tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, you have now seen him. Jesus says, you're now seeing me. In fact, I'm the one speaking to you. And the man said without hesitation, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. You see the change? He was physically blind. He was physically blind to begin with. God restored his sight. He was changed. He faced opposition from the Pharisees, his leaders in the church, the synagogues, who threatened anyone who, who were to say Jesus is the Messiah. And that's exactly what the blind man did, right? He worshipped God. You see the change in him? He was blind. He had physical sight. He was changed. He faced opposition. And guys, in 2024, if you face opposition when you're doing the work of God or when you're beginning to just take a position, understand that this is what happened to the people in the past before. Even the Pharisees were the ones who were going to oppose the people in the Jewish faith. Already decided anyone who acknowledged that Jesus was the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. But this guy chose to worship him. And it's interesting, therefore, isn't it? In verse 39, Jesus says, For judgment I have come to this world, so that the blind will see, and those who see will become blind. I have come to this world, 39, so that the blind will see. This man, he saw. But guess what? Those who see will become blind. 
It's interesting, isn't it? The Pharisees who physically can see normal human beings, they were the ones who were blinded. And I want to encourage us, until we all meet Jesus, and in 2024, I hope we keep meeting Jesus in every email, in every situation, in every discussion with school principal, in everything that we do for our children, we meet Jesus, and then we will find him, and our eyes open up, and we see God for what he is. The blind will see. But guess what? Those who see will become blind. And then the Pharisees who were with him in verse 40 heard this. Of course, they got, they got, they got really angry, right? They asked, what? Are we blind too? And Jesus said, if you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. The ethics of Jesus, not avoiding, but always being involved, wanting to do the work of the kingdom, eyes are open, they begin to see. I pray for us that in this 2024, we will be like this blind man, whether he's a sinner or not, 25 says, I don't know. One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. I hope and pray that through this whole series, uh, when we begin to start in 6th Gen 2024 and then so forth, when we listen to things, we will understand that God, but now I see. But guess what? The more you Christ-like you become, just like this blind man, the more opposition you face. But I also want to encourage you, God is closer to you than you think. The blind man was centimeters, millimeters, a meter away from God, and he met God, but he did not know that he was God until God himself, verse 35, says, do you believe in the Son of Man? Tell me so that we believe. And Jesus revealed himself. I want to encourage us as we enter into 2024 and putting 2023 behind with thanksgiving. Know that God is closer to us than you think, and there's that need for us to always be in His presence, to do His work, and always be with Him. I want to take this opportunity to just tell us that in 2024, it's also good, I want to encourage all of us to really spend time, spending time practicing to be in the presence of God. Find a place in your heart to always know that God is there for you. There's a place in your heart and speak there with the Lord. It's the Lord's reception room. Find a place in your heart. Someone said, an old sage says, uh, find a place in your heart and speak there with the Lord. Will you make time for God? Find a place. Uh, some of us, 2024, 20, too busy. Find a place consciously, cultivate a habit, a holy habit, a routine of always wanting to be in the presence of God and always being with Him. And if you want to just think about it, what is the main theme in the Bible? The main theme in the Bible is not uh, uh, the promise that I will, I will forgive you. No, the main theme, the constant promise of God is, I will be with you. I will be with you. Not so much I will forgive you. Yes, God forgives you. But the main thing, the central promise in the Bible is not I will forgive you. The most frequent promise is I will be with you. And I want to encourage us always to seek God in whatever you do. And as you pray and as you, you seek God, uh, ask Him what He wants you to do, always be seeking Him. And in, in, in 2024, I was just talking to some of my friends, Karen was with us, I want us to just uh, go on every once a month to go out there and then invite our friends. And something struck me, do we? I was just talking to Royston, should we do this? Uh, getting people to come with some of my friends. I got this friend who's an F&B owner. We will go to his uh, new restaurant. Uh, we will do a bit of a simple dinner. We invite our friends to come. We get Silas to talk or we talk, talk about finance or, or this guy who's an F&B owner, a good Christian. Ask him about how the challenges as we, 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 we operate an F&B outlet to just really talk about God, how we, how we have that presence of God that will help us even as we do our business. And, and what more better thing to do, just like we read in, in chapter, Mark chapter 6, chapter 7, always be in the marketplace and Jesus was always involved getting his hands dirty. As opposed to the Pharisees, what do they do? Hide in the synagogues, don't come out. Anything they do, wash their hands first. I want to pray the ethics of Jesus, the ethics of involvement against the ethics of avoidance. And that's why I want to, I want to just say that maybe Royster, what we want to do is really go out there every last Thursday. Let me check out the dates under 25th Gen or 1st Feb, get the place, go out there in the marketplace and make ourselves visible. Do we make ourselves visible as a teacher, uh, make ourselves visible as an F1 operator, as a nurse, as a lecturer, so that even I know some of us are in the marketplace, we can't really talk about God, I understand. You can't say I'm a, you can't preach Jesus when you're in a, as a nurse. I understand that. But our action, the things we do, it, does it show people that Jesus is alive? That Jesus is someone that 
you will follow. I will be with you. That is really what God promises, isn't it? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. When, when God himself came to earth, his name, redemptive name was Emmanuel, God with us. When Jesus left, his promise was to send the Holy Spirit so that I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I want to pray for you in 2024 that you will seek God's presence and always seek his presence and always be with him. The presence of God that is so such a blessing for us so that we will find him. Just like the prophet Samuel, uh, the prophet Elisha, they, they knew of God, they had to practice listening to God, but they found him and they will stick with him. Just like in Samuel, what was it? Samuel, a young boy named Samuel heard his voice call out. First, he thought it was Eli, the priest who called. And then Eli said, thought that I didn't call you. I think it's God. Why don't you listen carefully? And then when God calls you again, respond to him. So Samuel listened. And when God spoke, he really went and reached out to God. And even pe people like uh, Elisha, when Elisha was terrified fighting, he was surrounded by Israel's enemies. What shall he do? Elisha, Elisha called out and those who are, and, and his boss was, he was surrounded by enemies. He prayed to God, God, open my eyes. So open his eyes so they may see. And the Lord opened his eyes. Elisha saw they were surrounded by horses and chariots of fire, the power and protection of God. But one saying that says, often be reminded that you are in the presence of God. Often be reminded you're in the presence of God. But the problem with some of us will be this. If you say, but now I see, listen to me, but now I see means that you know the reality and the truth of God. But some of us, when we know the reality and the truth of God, we've got a problem. We actually don't want to see. We have some people, like maybe even some lawyers, or, hey, don't tell me your thing, I don't want to know, I don't want to, I don't want to see. It's like I want to close my eyes on something. But when we come to God, I want to encourage us that we want to say to God, God, I want to see. Remember last week, I was I think Karen was not there. We showed this uh, picture in Rome, right? Uh, buy the best, cry only once. Come to God, cry only one time. But as we come to God, come to God, God, I want to see. Yes, it may be painful. Sometimes you know the truth. But when you know the truth, the truth of God sets you free. I want to pray for us that we will in 2024 always come to God and say, God, I want to see. I'm prepared to pay the price of seeing everything and knowing you, knowing you in a better way. What is spiritual growth? We always talk about spiritual growth. I wanting to come to God and growing. I want to give you a definition of spiritual growth. Spiritual growth, in a way, is simply increasing our capacity to experience the presence of God. No slides for you, but listen to this. How do you define spiritual growth? One way to say spiritual growth is this. In a way, it is spiritual growth when we simply increase our capacity to experience the presence of God. Will that be something you want to do in 2024? Always seeking that opportunity to increase your capacity, to increase your capacity to experience, to expose to the presence of God. Now, God is everywhere. God is omniscient, right? Remember, we talked about it two weeks ago when I spoke. He is in the past. He is in the present. He's in the future. He is, his, his perception of time is not our perception of time. He is all at once, all three pages, all at one time. I want us to just really think about it and often be reminded that wherever we do, whatever we do, we're in the presence of God. So that when we articulate something, when we when we want to say something that we know we shouldn't be saying, when we want to say something that's sarcastic or careless, we are often reminded we're in the presence of God. We hold our tongue back, but we're often reminded to be present of God and do things that will bring glory to God. The problem is that some of us don't want God to be present. We actually want to seek ways of escaping. The problem is sometimes we know that, oh, if we go to God, uh, oh, a lot of things I, I, I do half past six, I can't do anymore. I must do things well. I cannot cheat anymore. I cannot lie. I want to pray for all of us that we will get this right so that in 2024, we will say, God, God, I'm, I want to be with you. I want to get close to you. The problem is that God is the problem is that God is ever present, ever near, and that some of us seek ways of escape. That is the problem. So when we say, but now I see, it, it presupposes that we're prepared to go to God. God, I'm prepared to follow you. You know, some, some, some of us, you know what we do? We are not following God. We're telling God, God, you follow me. We 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 take God, we we take the good things about God, God, you follow me. Lah. When I need you at the time, I'll call you. Some of us, we, we only call God when we need God for what? When we're sick, we call God. 
God, can you please heal me? But we don't call God when we do investments. Uh, or buy a new house. Uh, uh, most, I mean, some, some pastors are saying that, you know, most of the time people come to me, uh, people come to me, my church members, only because when they're sick, then we do hospital visits. But the pastors don't get the, the members coming to them when they want to upgrade their house. They don't, they don't ask for prayer. Or they don't make some investment, they don't. Come to God. Practice your presence of God. Always wanting to cultivate a habit and come before Him. Colossians 3.23 says, Whatever you do, Work at it with all your heart as, as if working for the Lord, not for men. In 2024, will work be worship for you? You know, if worship is just sing song, right? Think about it common sensically. You only at most say worship on Saturday, 5 p.m. once a week. If worship is only singing song, we've got a problem. You only sing once a week. Can you imagine if you only eat once a week, you'll die sooner than you can even say the word the. But how about work is worship and we worship God in whatever we do. So that whatever you do, Colossians 3.23, work at it with all your might. Do your best as working for the Lord. I don't really care whether your boss is evil, but you work for the Lord because you're working for Him. You're not working for men. So that whenever we go, whatever we do, we find joy in 2024. That email that is so difficult to send, that boss is so difficult, that 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 uh, subordinate that's always giving you trouble, uh, that peer of yours is trying to sabotage you, politics at work, children falling sick all the time. How about coming to God and say, God, my work is worship to you. I will worship you regardless of circumstances. I will follow you. I will seek your presence. I will always be with you. Isn't it? If your work is not worship and worship is only one hour a week, we'll, we'll not make it because your life, your whole entire life is not worship. You only worship God once a week. Every Saturday, sing two songs when Esther plays the guitar, that's worship. No. Work is worship unto God. Our life, our duty as a, a when, we, when we become a father, when we're a husband, we, we do it unto the Lord. It is just coming to God and evoking His presence to bless us, to help us. I want Malcolm to just show this picture now of uh, Michael Angelo. Can, can Malcolm just show this slide? This is a slide and some of us have uh, the privilege of going to Rome. Uh, please don't think of me trying to show this picture to be to be uh, obscene. This is a uh, Michael Angelo. He pa painted this picture in the What's the chapel called? The Sistine Chapel. And when he painted it, he painted it, I think it was 1508, 1512. When he painted it, some fun facts, he was painting it. Uh, it is on the roof. Huh? So this picture, if you have a chance to go to Rome, go to the Vatican City, you go to this Sistine Chapel, that's the highlight. You see this picture down there. He's painting it. And when he's painting it, his, his head was always on the ceiling. So much so that uh, I think he probably got whiplash injury. All the nurses will know whiplash injury. So that after he's finished painting, right? Whenever he had to read something, he couldn't read something, uh, just a, a, a document in front of him. He had to read the document placed upwards. That's what happens when you paint for four years. Now, look at the picture. The picture shows Adam and the picture shows God. One interpretation of this picture is called the creation of, the creation of Adam. This is Michelangelo's painting found of the painting of God and Adam on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. If you look carefully at the painting, I hope you can see it. You notice that the figure of God, the finger of God, obviously God is on the right side of the picture. Finger of God is extended towards the man with great vigor. God is, 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 is proactive by wanting to reach out. God twists his body to move it as close to the man as possible. Do you see it? God is so, sort of twisting it and then and with his uh, legion or uh, with his uh, body of uh, army of angels just trying to reach out to the man. His head is turned, God's head is turned towards the man and his gaze. Can you see that God's eyes are face looking towards the man? How about God's arm? God's arm is stretched out. Where's his index finger? His index finger, you see the index finger? His index finger is extended straight forward. And it is a very uh, a taut. The muscles are all in place. The eyes are in place. The body is in place. The posture is forward looking. It's reaching out. It's God reaching out to him. Every muscle is taut. This is God 
wanting to rush towards Adam on a cloud, one of the chariots of heaven propelled by the angels. This is the painting called the creation of Adam. But some of it call, some scholars call it the endowment of Adam. Adam has been given his physical life. His eyes are open, he's conscious. What is happening here is that he's being offered life with God. All of man's potential, physical and spiritual, is contained in this one timeless moment. One art critic looked at this picture called the Christian Adam and critic it is. Apparently, one of the messages that Michelangelo wanted to convey from this was God's implacable determination to reach out and to be with the one he has created. So it is God wanting to reach out to Adam. God is as close as he can be. But listen to this. You will see that there's a gap, a small gap between God's index finger reaching out to Adam's finger, which is on the left. Thank you. I see someone doing the slide presentation. I see Malcolm showing the thing. You see that it is a very little gap. A gap, nonetheless, God is as close as can be, but having come this close, God is a gentleman. He gives us a choice. So in 2024, just like Adam, we have a choice. He allows just a little space. And there's always the choice. It is for Adam to choose. It is for Adam to make the move. In 2024, I want to encourage us, if you don't already know in the many years of coming before God and Christian life, God is always there. When we backslide, the one that moves is not God. God is always there. Go back to the slide picture again, please. When you look at the picture, when, when God is there, when you backslide, God doesn't move. It is Adam who moves. Look at the posture of Adam sitting down there, more difficult to interpret. Arm is partially extended towards God, but his body is reclined in a lazy pose, leaning backwards. Dida Apa, the Malay, will say, no interest at all in making a connection. Maybe the man assumes, listen to this, maybe he assumes that God having come this far, We'll close the gap. Maybe he says, I God already come so far, so near already. I just sit down there, relax a bit, recline, let him come. I just I just fix up my finger a bit. Never mind, let him come. No, we all have a choice in 2024. It is for us. We don't assume that God having this come this far will close the gap. There's a choice. We have to live that finger. We have to to be like Adam here, lift that finger so that our left finger touches the right index finger of God. I want to encourage us that this is something that you want to be reminded of, that God is closer to us than we think and he's never further than a prayer away. Will you be a man that will be choosing to say to God, God, Thank you for blessing me. Thank you for taking away the spiritual blindness. One thing I know, I was blind, but now I see. Will you, as we start talking about, we focus on the basic fundamental topics of prayer. And next week, I want to talk about breadcrumbs. Just come and listen to me on 6th Gen. I think God is giving me a message. How we re-look at it and, and say, God, you're the bread of life. So who am I? The leftover? The crumb of Christ? How do I look at my whole life? How do I look at prayer? How do I look at faith? How do I look at God? We talk about how do I look at loving others? How do uh, uh, we talk about how do we look, look at our finances? What do we do with all the things that God has given me? So that we will be not what the verse 939 says, for judgment have come to this world so that the blind will see and those who see will become blind. May our eyes be open. May we be like Adam, but we will straighten up so that the posture will not be like Adam. We will not, not only lift a finger, but we will reach out to God and be a blessing to him. We come to the book of Daniel. As we come to the end of the book of Daniel, I'm reminded of so many things. I'm reminded that um, the book of Daniel tells us a few things, and let me just use the uh, acronym or whatever you want to call it, D-A-N-I-E-L. Today, no slides, but I thought maybe sometimes it's good to just listen. D, a desire for us to excel in 2024. I want to say something to us. We have the spirit of excellence, but you know what? We are never going to be perfect. I try to be the best lawyer, Silas, the best country manager, the best banker, Winnie, uh, best nurse lecturer, best, someone's the best uh, grab driver, best 
best army colonel, but guess what? We will never be perfect. Good enough is good enough for God. When you do your best, as long as this, God says to you, it is good enough. Although we strive, we do our best to be as good as we get, but the spirit of excellence, uh, we, let's not put ourselves under such pressure that we feel that we must be perfect. We'll never be perfect, but we will be good enough if we just reach out to God and connect with Him. D, desire to excel, but it is good enough to be good enough. A, always be attentive to His prompting. When we're in the presence of God, God will speak to us. God will tell you to do things, sometimes little things. Call someone. Maybe Angela, God tells you, call Daniel now and just tell him, I want to pray for you. Or, or just send a word because God says, uh, uh, Angela, send to uh, Joey, uh, uh, chapter 9, verse 9, send a verse to her. How about we be A, desire to excel D, A, attentive to his prompting. God is in a position in 24, also prompting us, telling us what to do. And Never to yield, never to yield to, to be uh, not wanting to do God's work, but always be in the position to say, God, I will stand firm in the position. I'll never yield. I will never back down. I want to do the work of God. And never to yield. D, D-A-N-I, increase in knowledge and understanding. Increase in knowledge and understanding uh, just like Daniel, always wanting to know more. But knowledge is just hate knowledge. But understanding means that you know the knowledge, you apply the knowledge with understanding to be a person that God can use. Increase in knowledge and understanding. E, enjoy His presence. E, enjoy His presence. Always being delighted about how you can be with God. L, love Him and His people. So D, Daniel, desire to excel. Good enough is good enough. A, be attentive to his promptings when God tells us to do something. N, never to yield. Stand firm on God's laws. I, increase in knowledge and understanding. E, enjoy his presence. L, love him and his people. It's almost time whereby we'll just gather our food elements and then we, we wait for the clock to strike 12. But I want to just encourage us. D-N-I-E-L. But to do this, all the things that we talk about, can I encourage my friends, my brothers, sisters, my good friends? I've, I've some, of, some of you people have known you for what, 10, 15, 20 years. I'm a British walk alongside us. Can, can I just encourage us? Learn something here. Don't be true to yourself in 2024. You know, sometimes we talk, oh, you know, uh, I just want to be true to myself. I don't want to be a fake. Yes, there's a place to be true to yourself, but, but don't be true to yourself fully. Because we are all sinners saved by grace. If you are truly, if you are truly just true to yourself, a lot of things you don't want to do. That day we we're just having a discussion on twenty third when we had dinner, and then I think uh, uh, Silas was there, Winnie was there, and uh, uh, Karen was just talking, and then we we're talking about how uh, some of us are introvert, extrovert, and then I think uh, Silas saying, "Uh, yeah, yeah, Daniel's not an introvert. Uh, he, he's not an extrovert. He's just a in. Uh, I'm also not. I'm an introvert, extrovert, whatever that means. If you are true to yourself, listen." If we are all true to ourselves, a lot of things we won't do for God. Are you with me? We always say, oh, no, maybe I'm getting old. I, I, I don't want to be, I, I, I don't, I want to be true to myself. I don't want to do, I just want to be myself. There's a place to be yourself to some extent, but we cannot afford to be true to ourselves. Because if you're true to yourself, guess what? You don't want to be in the presence of God. You don't want to be in the position where just like blind men say, but now I see. You will not do the work of God. I urge all of us to be open so that God can come in and He can mold us. Let Him, the master molder, come and mold us, the jars of clay, and we be malleable so that in 2024, we will do everything as in Colossians 23. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men. If we want to work at everything with all our heart, it must mean something. My friends, we cannot afford to be true to ourselves completely. We must allow God to come in. When His presence prompts us, when He tells us to do something, we will yield to His presence and His prompting, but we will never yield to what is not from God, but to just keep doing the work that God wants us to do. Will this be somebody you 
in 2024. I want to encourage us. This has been a challenging year for some of us. I know of uh, certain people who have gone through a few things, some physical issues, some family issues, some financial issues, not a liberty to share, but I want to encourage us Will we all tap on to the presence of God and continue to be with Him in 2024? My clock says 11.51. We take 10 minutes. I invite you, especially if you're the head of the house, can you just now gather your family, if you're alone, take your elements and come and partake of the presence of God as we come before Him in the last 10 minutes of 2023. Can I invite you to tear off um, the bread if you can get your elements open and ready, will you just come before the Lord? Will you come before Him? And next week, I'm going to talk about Jesus being the bread of life. Today, you have a privilege of coming before the Lord, the biscuit representing the bread of God, the bread of life. Will you prepare your hearts? And then the, the tear open, the liquid representing the blood of Jesus. And when you're ready, I want to encourage you to just come before the Lord in 2023, spend a couple of minutes. We have a bit of time, perfect timing. 11.52, you've got eight minutes. Can I encourage you? Get to see Victoria and Toby and then a few of them. Uh, Wai Kiong, good to see you guys. I'm glad to see you guys on video. Uh, wherever you are, some of you may not even be in Singapore. Wherever you are, just switching on. I'm just very so encouraged. Can I invite you to just take the elements and get your hearts ready. Be thankful. Will you come before the Lord in 2023? And the fathers, maybe just get ready your children and begin to really pray for them, prepare for them to take the elements. Will you just come before the Lord and say, God, I'm thankful for 2023, whatever I've gone through. I don't know about you. I have a challenging year, 2023, getting a medication for the kids, going to China, then PSLE, thank God, uh, um, um, Elliot did, uh, did, did get into the school they wanted him to get into, the kind of things that we had to go through people leaving church or, or whatever misunderstandings, whatever happens, but we come before the Lord and we say to God, God, may your presence abound. I want to follow you. Will this be your prayer? I want to invite you as we come another seven minutes, just quickly go to a good time for you. Maybe the, the parents, the, the fathers of the household, the head of the household, will you just lead and take some time to even pray for your children and pray for them and then I will lead us closer to about 11.58 to prepare to take the Lord's Supper and then we close the year and we pray a year for 2024. So in this next couple of minutes, well, as the Lord leads you, especially if you are with your children, we'll just come before the Lord and pray together as a family. Father, thank you for my family. Thank you for Karen. Thank you for Elliot and thank you for Isabel. Father, I want to pray that Lord, your presence be with us. Holy Spirit, guide us. We pray for your presence, Lord. May our every moment be worship unto you. So that, Lord, when we study, when we work, or when Karen goes out there, and maybe even for in a, a, you a bless her with a job, Lord, may work be worship unto you. May we be a tremendous blessing to those people that come to us. Lord, we pray for this church for 2024. Lord, may this church be a church whereby all of us will not be spiritually blinded, but Lord, will be like the blind man who says, but now, one thing I know, I was blind, but now I see. So, Father, we pray that as you come for judgment, I've come to this world so that the blind will see. Lord, we will be the ones that the blind will see and not be the ones that those who are see will become blind. Lord, may we come and come before you and be blessed. So, Father, we pray that, Lord, you be with us as we come before you in 2024. I want to pray now for a blessing for all the families represented here. I can see you. Uh, I can see a lot of the people here. I can pray for Malcolm's family, uh, um, Wayne and Sabrina, Owen and Sharon, Royston, Shireen, Tiffany, Brian, uh, Victoria, Toby, Angela, Joey and Winston, Nyam, Dawn's family, Olivia, Silas and family, um, um, uh, Nathan, Cindy and Jonathan, JJ, uh, Gunn's family, Dion and the rest. Father, thank you for my brothers. Thank you for Michelle. Thank you for all of them. Lord, will the blood of Jesus cover them? Lord, I pray for them that, Lord, in this year, many things they have never seen before, they will see. And, Lord, open their eyes so that, Lord, for those blind spots of our lives whereby we have not done things right, Lord, you'll make it right for us. So, Father, bless 
I pray for all the children, Father, I pray for them as they enter into the next year, be it secondary one or primary five or primary six or those going to PSLE, Lord, prepare them and prepare them to do well. Lord, uh, just that we pray for thee, may you give them a, a desire to excel. But Lord, good enough will be good enough. So Lord, take away the pressure. May we not feel so stressed that we have to overstretch. But Lord, may we just do our best. I pray for all the children, that Lord, and also for the adults, that the adults will be like the children. Lord, will be attentive to you in 2024. Whenever you prompt us, Lord, we will do your will. Father, I pray also that, Lord, we will never yield, we will never surrender, but yet we will yield to the presence of God as you bless us. I pray for the cell groups, that, Lord, as they meet, as you lead them, as they go out to the marketplace, those people who do food distribution, and as we meet once a month when we gather, Lord, may you uh, in, help us to invite people. May we be able to just reach out to invite friends and colleagues and even those people who have backslided and those people who are new to us, Lord, will we, will we be able to find these people and be a tremendous blessing to these people? Lord, may 2024 be a year whereby we increase in knowledge and understanding. I pray for all of us that, Lord, as we read the Word of God, we will be blessed. As we read the Word of God, we will thirst for you and thirst for your righteousness. But I pray that, Lord, in 2024, my brothers and sisters here will enjoy your presence Lord, will your presence touch them so that, Lord, whenever you touch them, they know that they are in your presence and that, Lord, you're watching over them. Holy Spirit, be so real in the lives of my brothers and sisters in 2024. And I pray that, Lord, um, in, the, in the last days, Lord, there is love for you and for your people. Lord, in 2024, may my brothers and sisters be so loving. May they be loving you and your people, and Lord, I pray for them. They will not be so true to themselves that they'll forget to open an opening in their hearts and in their character so that, Lord, you'll mold them. I pray in 2024, Lord, that my brothers and sisters will allow you to mold them so that, Lord, even if they seek your presence, they'll find you. I pray for my brothers and sisters in 2024 that, Lord, they will spiritually grow, that, Lord, they will increase the capacity to experience the presence of God in their lives. And I pray for them that their study is worship unto you. I pray for all the children when they learn new concepts, when things are difficult, Lord, they'll pray to you and Lord, you open their eyes so they'll not be blind, they'll be able to learn things. And I pray for us out in the marketplace that Lord, we will not be blind, we will open our eyes in the spiritual realm and see that Lord, you're doing a new work in the lives of all of us. And this last minute, my watch, my clock reads 11.59. Can I invite you now to partake of the Lord's Supper? Come before the Lord with thanksgiving. My watch says 12 midnight. My friends, blessed New Year, blessed 2024. The Lord bless you. Father, thank you for 2024. Thank you for a wonderful privilege to bring together my brothers and sisters so the Lord, we usher in the new year. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you. The Lord prosper you. The Lord prompt you. The Lord continue to challenge you. The Lord love you. The Lord gives you favor at the marketplace. The Lord cause people to court your favor. The Lord cause you to reach out to the lost. The Lord cause you to have compassion so that you not be like the Pharisees. You will get your hands dirty in the marketplace to be a blessing. The Lord cause you to be like Jesus, more and more like him, conforming to his image, so that people, until they know God, will see God in you. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you. We pray all this through the name of the Father, 
the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. I see you next week on the 6th of January. God bless you. Happy New Year. 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 Happy New Year.